Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. And today we got a performance review on these bad boys. This, my friends, is the Air Jordan 35. <laughs> So the traction on these guys hasn't changed much between the 34s and now the 35s. We've got herringbone full length that's in that kind of fan pattern or bladed pattern where it's multi-directional and all that stuff. And it works great. So as you can see, the herringbone hasn't really changed from the 34 to the 35. The overall pattern and design is the same. And I think that that's great because I love the 34s traction and I love the 35s traction as well. The only downside with this is that it is shallow. The grooves are very pliable, so it's great indoors. If you use these primarily outdoors, you will burn through them pretty quickly. And I understand that we are outside right now, but that's because that's where we're filming. It's not necessarily where we were testing. Now, as far as the fit is concerned, I went true to size. That's what I would recommend. I did that in the 34s as well. I have been hearing a lot of people saying that they went down half a size in the 34s. So if that was you, you might want to do the same thing. However, these guys right here have ankle notches and pillows. It's a much more sculpted back of the shoe than the 34. So it will push your foot up just a little bit. So again, I recommend going true to size, but you know, whatever you normally wear in your signature Air Jordans, that's what you should go with. Now, as far as overall lockdown is concerned, these guys lace up fairly traditionally with these uh, internal lacing system. The downside to the shoe overall, in my opinion, are also the internal lacing systems because these guys right here, these three, they actually are right here in my arch. And when I tie them up real tight, they ended up chafing the sh out of my foot. Yeah. Then that took me out for a little bit because uh, it made some holes in, in my foot. I have that happen every once in a while. It happened with the Air Jordan 33, I believe as well, with the fast fit system. So as long as you do not tie these guys up extremely tight, like whatever you normally would, that's, you know, one of those uh, tip for anybody. Cause like th this is one of those things you're going to want to keep your not eye out, but like, you know, you want to pay attention. Cause if you start to feel that shit, man, you're going to want to change your shoes real quick. Trust me. Cause that shit hurts. I guarantee it. So going back down to the traction real quick, you can see literally where everything is pointing towards. And that's exactly the type of coverage you're going to be getting. So if you're pushing off, it's got all of that. Uh, traction coverage directly underneath your toe. If you're gonna do a quick stop, you're good to go. If you're like Campbell Walker, you're gonna hit a big old step back. All of that stuff, you're gonna be fine. So this traction setup right here is just A1, day one. It's awesome. Now the cushion setup is very similar to the Air Jordan 34 with some slight modifications. The forefoot is exactly the same. It doesn't feel the same, especially right from the jump. However, if I'm going from a shoe like I was just wearing the old Jordan 5 Retro into these, you could definitely feel how bouncy these are in the front. They just aren't quite as bouncy as the 34s. I think it's just because the way that they covered up the Zoom Air almost fully, except for in the back right here. That's what's kind of doing it. The 34s had that little hole right there. I think it allowed the zoom to really expand. However, you're still getting all of that impact protection up front. It feels amazing. It's still one of my favorite zoom air setups of all time. I just do prefer the 34 overall. However, in the back, that's where these guys have the 34s beat. They have a large volume zoom unit, not just a hex unit. It's a lot of coverage and it's great for those of you that want full length cushion or heel and forefoot cushion. This is going to be one of those shoes that's going to take care of you. Now, as far as the materials go, this is where I think that these really excel over the 34s. There is a lot of awesome material these uh, giant overlay stripes right here these panels are actual leathers and suede depending on the colorway there is a lot of synthetics and textiles as well which is great for ventilation flexibility break-in all that kind of good stuff so I think that this is kind of like the best of both worlds now again as far as the overall fit and lockdown I thought that it was pretty good I did not get great lockdown when I was not using this top eyelet in the the heel area which was kind of surprising because of the heel notches but all I did was move it up to the top and I was good to go just be careful again for those stripes right there man when I first was 
playing in these. I thought it was the arch. I thought it was the eclipse plate. It was neither. It was actually these guys right here. They need to put a little bit more padding or buffer between this and your foot. Like if you look inside, it's just a very thin sheet of nylon over it. And it's just not enough for those of us that like to yank on our laces. Cause those things really push on the midfoot right there. This will help push it up. And when you're maneuvering and you're getting sweaty, your skin's getting softer. And these things just kind of like act like serrated blades. And before you know it, you have holes in your feet. Now, as far as support is concerned, these guys are, again, greater, just barely, than the 34s, at least the original 34s. I think the SE is on par with this guy right here, but these, all the extra overlays and materials really do help with that lateral support. The Eclipse plate is awesome because the original one was basically at the midfoot and midsole only. This guy actually wraps up and around the foot right here, so it keeps you caged in laterally. I think this is going to be great for bigger guys, guys like Zion, where the original Eclipse plate maybe wasn't quite enough. This thing is going to really, like, house them on that footbed perfectly. And then the back of the shoe, very much like the Air Jordan 5, a lot of sculpting. All you gotta do is just make sure that you tie all the way up and you should be good. The outrigger section is not enormous, but it's just enough to where you don't feel like you're gonna be tipping over or anything. It's a wide enough base, lots of stability, and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, so that pretty much takes care of it for the performance review on the Air Jordan 35. I think that these are a dope shoe. However, I still do prefer the 34, pretty much every iteration. I love the regulars, I love the SEs, and I really love the lows. Not to say that the 35 isn't great, it's just not as good as last year's model which i guess it's like its own fault because it uses you know what i mean it uses enough pieces from last year's model where it really has you know large shoes to fill and it just didn't quite get there but they're still a solid model overall just watch out for that midfoot pinching where the lace strands are and you should be good to go if you were interested in grabbing a pair we'll leave links in the description box below thank you so much for watching thanks for all the support and until next time guys have a good one actually Hold off with that. Make sure that you click the link in the description box below. It'll be an additional link. It'll head you over to weartesters.com where you can check out their price, their weight, and their scores, along with the written review. That's always good. But that's a bucket. Really hope that I get this bucket, by the way. Have it warmed up. Double rim. Ooh. Okay, one more. One more. Can you still see me? Should we act like that's a defender? We got Shaq in the building. Shaq in the building. Hey! Right. Oh, we safe, we safe. Still can't see the hoop though. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Technical difficulties, there's mud. That may have been a dope shot. Also.